Hello everyone, it's Joe Amoya, the Ambassador for Love. I am so excited to be with you tonight. This is going to be amazing. You know, tonight's webinar is called Uncovering Truth, Uncovering the Truth, Discovering the Real Reasons Why You Continue to Struggle in Your Love Life. You know, by the end of this call, I want you to really understand what's really going on. I want you to walk away with the understanding of what you need to do to create the results that you're really looking for. Now, unfortunately, because we only have a limited amount of time tonight, that I can only give you, like, the real meat and potatoes. So if you really resonate with this call, you really resonate with the message, and you really resonate with the message and the gift that our special guests are going, our special guests are going to give to you tonight, and you realize that, you know what, if you want to go further, I promise you you're going to have an opportunity to do that. Now, I do have two really special women on this call tonight. And I will be introducing them to you in just a little while. But before I do so, I just want you, the reason I brought them on is because they were literally in your shoes a little over a year ago. They were frustrated. They were disgusted. They, you know, were dating all the jerks and had really bad experiences. But, you know, by making a couple of little minor changes and really getting to what was really going on, they're actually able to create really happy and fulfilling relationships, the relationships that they never thought possible. And I'm going to let you let them tell you their stories themselves. But before we do that, I want to go over some guidelines for the call. You know, we've had over 350 people register for this call tonight, and we're at capacity. And for some of you, this is the whether you're listening live or you're listening to the replay. This is the first time you've you've been to one of my webinars. First time you've actually heard me live, and Anytime I have a new audience, I always, I always review my two guidelines. It's the two guidelines for every program I do, every, every speech, every presentation. Whenever I'm front of, in front of an audience, I always have two guidelines. And the first is simply to open your mind and your heart. See, I believe that your mind and your heart are, are like a parachute. They only function when they're open. And so as you listen tonight, I simply invite you to take what resonates with you, take what you like and keep it, and simply get rid of the rest. I say it's kind of like clothes shopping. You try it on, you fit. If you like it, cool, you keep it. If not, simply get rid of it. Don't waste any more time and don't waste any more energy on it. And the second guideline is the most important. And that guide, guideline is don't believe a word I say. Now, I know some of you are struggling going, wait a minute. You send out all these emails, you put this presentation together, and now you're telling me not to believe a word you say? What's up with that? Well, let me explain. See, there are so many people who get on their pedestals and they get on their soapboxes and, and they make it seem like they know everything. Okay? I don't know everything and I'll be the first to admit it. What I'm going to share to you tonight is simply my truth. The things that I've learned along the way. And again, I'm simply going to ask you to try it on and see if it works for you. But I promise you is when you listen tonight with that open mind and that open heart and you really apply it and you really take a good long look in the mirror and look at what I'm saying, you're going to see that it makes 100% absolute truth. You know, there's, I'm one of those people, I was born in the Bronx, which is in a suburb of New York, you know, born to a traditional Roman Catholic Italian family. You know, I'm a real straight shooter. I don't believe in wasting time. I believe in speaking my truth. You know, sometimes I do it <laughs> a little too directly, but I'd rather you understand where I'm coming from. And my philosophy is that I really don't care if you like me, but I'd much rather that you respect me. And so I know that you can respect me if you know that I'm speaking my truth. Doesn't mean that you don't, don't have to like it. Doesn't mean that you have to agree with it. But I simply want you to understand where I'm coming from. And the reason I put this together is because I understand what it's like. There was a time, and you're going to hear my story in just a few minutes, where I was struggling. And nobody helped me. You know, I had to kind of figure it out all on my own the hard way. And that's really one of the reasons why I do this. You know, I actually gave up, for those of you who aren't familiar with my story, I gave up a career in chiropractic to help others, you know, find true love in their life. I'm not talking about just finding a relationship. Anybody can do that. I'm talking about finding that special someone who lights up your world. So if you're watching this right now and you're listening to this, you're one of three things. You're frustrated. You're pulling your hair out. You're trying to get the results you want, but it's just not happening. And you're confused. You can't understand why it's not happening. You can't put your finger on it. 
And there's also a part of you that's worried. You're afraid that if you don't figure it out, that if things don't change, you're going to continue to struggle, and ultimately, two things are going to happen. You're either going to settle for another crappy guy and another crappy relationship, or you're never going to find the love that you really want. Now, I get this, because many years ago, I was in the same exact place. I was frustrated. I was confused. I was worried. I had just come off an engagement. I was 30 days away from walking down the aisle. And I was absolutely miserable. And it all just fell apart. It all blew up in my face. And fortunately, I was able to walk away with some you know, major burns and scrapes. And I survived. But as a result of that, I experienced all three of these emotions. And I want to know, you know, WTF? I had put my heart and soul into trying to make that relationship work, trying to make my ex happy. And no matter what I did, no matter how hard I tried, it still didn't work. Now, I'd be lying if I didn't say that my self-esteem had taken a major hit. But it wasn't the first time it had taken a hit. I've just been taking, you know, I was like Muhammad Ali. I've been taking hits since the day I've been born. But this one really got me. And up until that point, I thought I was a pretty smart individual. And I never put myself in positions where I had really crappy and unfulfilling relationships. I had lots of relationships that didn't work out and went wrong. But this relationship was absolutely horrible. And so I started to take a good look in the mirror. And I started to analyze not only you know myself, but this whole dating and relationship thing. Why did some people have great relationships and other people continue to struggle? And that's really the premise of what we're going to talk about tonight. It's really getting to the truth. Because once I uncovered the truth, that's when things started to change. Now, I'm not a big believer in statistics because I believe statistics can be manipulated by the person who's presenting the information. But, and I'm not, you know, there, I find there are two types of people. You know, there are the optimists, which are the rose-colored glasses-wearing people who hug a tree, sing kumbaya, and life is always wonderful. And I'm not one of those people. And then there are the pessimists where it's the doom and gloom, nothing ever goes right, nothing ever goes their way, and it's everybody and everything's fault. And I'm not one of those people either. I'm not an optimist. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. I simply look at things as they are, and I see what I can do to create the results that I'm ultimately looking for. Because my philosophy in life is if somebody else has achieved it, then I can achieve it too. And that's the person I'm going to study. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So I'm going to give you some information just so you understand this is what's really going on. This is why it's so hard to create the results that you say you want. So <clears throat> I was a biology major in college. And one of the courses I took was something called genetics. And in genetics, there's this thing called the Punnett square. And a Punnett square is actually a diagram that geneticists use to determine the, pro the probability of a specific gene characteristic. So in other words, if there was a husband and a wife, and one had brown eyes and one had blue eyes, they used the Punnett square to determine the probability of it being brown eyes or blue eyes. And same thing with hair. If one had brown hair and one had red hair, what is the probability that the child that would be born would have brown hair or red hair or blonde hair? So what I did, because I have a friend who's in marketing, and he told me a long time ago that a good mind creates a great mind steals. Well, I'm not really that smart, but I think I'm pretty clever. So what I did is I took the Punnett square and I actually applied it to relationships. And I came up with something really interesting. And so what I've discovered is there are actually two types of people out there. You know, there are two types of men and there are two types of women. And the first is what I call the EUs, which are the emotionally unavailable. Now, <laughs> I'm sure if you're on this call, you've dated or been involved with a couple of guys like that. So really don't need any explanations there. And if you found, if I had some single guys on the call and they were listening and you asked them if there were un, un, emotionally, emotionally unavailable women out there, they tell you absolutely. So when it comes to this whole relationship thing, I always say the circus is the same, the clowns are different. There are good guys out there who are having a hard time finding the right woman and there are good women out there who are having a hard time finding the right men. So we want to start off with the understanding is that there are some jerks who are both male and female people who are emotionally unavailable in both sexes. But we also have the people who are emotionally available. So we have men who are emotionally available, and these are the good guys. These are the guys who are, who are ready for a relationship, 
who are looking for that special woman. I know you're sitting there going, yeah, but where are they? Well, <laughs> we'll get to that, I promise. And we have the emotionally available women. And if you're listening to this call, you know, you're probably in that group as well. So what I did is I took this Punnett square and I ran some probabilities here. So I want you to just check this out for a little while. So if we look in the upper left-hand corner, we see that when you take an emotionally unavailable man and you combine him with an emotionally available woman, unavailable woman, you get an emotionally unavailable couple. Okay? This is like fire and dynamite. This is like the most toxic of the relationship. This relationship will never, ever, ever lead to a happy and full, fulfilling long-term relationship. So then what we did is we took the emotionally unavailable guy and combined him to the good woman, the emotionally available woman. And when you combine these two, you get a woman who is never really happy, who's never really fulfilled. And again, I know some of you listening go, are saying, been there, done that. You've dated a guy where you've tried to do everything, but no matter what you tried, no matter how hard you worked, no matter how much you gave him your heart, you never got the experience that you were ultimately looking for. And that's sad. And that leads us to the emotionally available guys and the emotionally unavailable women. And these are the situations where the guys are happy. But they're not getting their needs met. The guys are frustrated. They're unhappy. They're unfulfilled. This is where no matter what the guy does, it's never good enough. And so, again, I want you to realize this works equally for both sexes. And then we have the last scenario where we have an emotionally available guy and an emotionally available woman. This is the relationship where you experience relationship nirvana. This is the relationship that everybody wants, but if you see statistically, very few achieve. And according to just regular probability, you've got a 25% chance. So what you need to understand is that when you have an emotionally unavailable man and an emotionally unavailable woman, that relationship is going to fail. And when you have an emotionally unavailable man and an emotionally available woman, that relationship is going to fail as well. And guess what? When you have an emotionally available man and an emotionally unavailable woman, you got it. You got failure as well. So you see, just starting off the bat, you've got a 25% of having the kind of happy and fulfilling relationship that you really want. Now, I know some of you are out there going, this sucks. You know, I've got a 25% chance statistically of having the kind of relationship that I really want. And I get that. And I say, it does suck if you're in the 75%. What we're going to teach you tonight is to understand what you need to do to be in the 25% and why up until now, no matter how hard you tried, no matter how much you've done things, you've been in the 75%. And I'm sure just looking at this diagram, you've seen, oh, yeah, I dated a bunch of emotionally unavailable men. Okay? It'll never lead, no matter how much you try, it'll never lead to the kind of experience that you really want. So what I want you to understand is that if you want to have the type of relationship you really desire, there is only one key thing that you need to do. And that is to find the right emotionally available guy. Now, I know some of you are listening going, yeah, I understand, but that's like finding a Sasquatch or the Loch Ness, Loch Ness Monster. You know, how the hell am I going to do that? I've been searching for years and it still hasn't happened. I get that. But what I want you to walk away with this call is that finding the right guy isn't as difficult as you think. I always say it's simple, but it's not easy. And so if you haven't been... If you haven't found the right guy, I believe that there are three specific reasons of why that hasn't happened. And that's what this triangle represents. Each side of the triangle represents one of the reasons of why you haven't met the right guy. And the first reason is you've got the wrong strategy. Or what I usually find when I'm mentoring my personal one-on-one -on -one clients is they really have no strategy. See, going through life saying, I want a nice man, is not a strategy. That's like saying, I'd like to lose weight. Okay? You've got to have a specific strategy. You've got to know who you're going for, specifically what kind of guy. You've got to be able to recognize him. You've got to be able to identify. You've got to be able to screen him and screen him quickly. You've got to be able to see through a guy's BS. 
Because, <laughs> ladies, I'll be the first to admit it. Yeah, guys, BS you. They'll tell you what you want to hear. But the reality is, if you just keep your eyes and ears open, you'll be able to recognize these clowns really, really quickly. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you probably haven't had the right strategy. And the second reason is you've been taking the wrong actions. If you, you know, the purpose of tonight is to really get real, to take a good look in the mirror and really uncover the truth of what's really going on. And so your job, your responsibility in this call, it's to sit back and really take this in and go, wait a minute, is there any truth to this? Because as the old expression says, the truth shall set you free. So you want to look at the actions you've been taking. You know, just because you love a man doesn't mean he's the right guy. You know, one of the things I learned from my ex fiance is that two individuals can be good people and still not be good for each other. So if you try real hard to make a man like you, or you jump into a relationship too quickly, or you have sex with a guy too quickly, or you say you want to be with a, a great guy, but yet you stay with a guy who doesn't show up when he's supposed to, who doesn't call, who doesn't respect you. You know, those actions are incongruent. You know, your, your actions have to back up your words. So one of the things I find that is very common is that a lot of the members of our community simply are taking wrong actions. They're saying one thing and doing another. You know, it's like the person who says they want to lose weight, but yet, and they may even go to the gym, but then they stop at McDonald's on the way home and have, you know, an extra value meal with large fries and a large shake. It's not going to give the result you want. You know, in the emails I sent out, you know, I talked about why a lot of the books and the programs and things don't work. Because it, in these books, in these programs, what they're talking about very often are different strategies and different actions you can take. You know, text the guy and do this or say this or wear your hair a certain way or lower your shoulder and bat your eyes. And those things occasionally work for some people, but the majority of the time they don't. And again, here's the truth. Let's be honest. If there was one strategy and one action that women need to take, there would be a best-selling book on that. That book would be at the top of the New York bestseller list for, for the last 30 years, okay, the last 100 years. And so there's something that's going beneath the surface, but nobody's looking. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's the real reason that, you're continu that you continue to struggle and not have the relationship that you say you desire. So do you care to guess what that reason is? You know, we talked about, you know, the two most common reasons so far are having the wrong strategy and taking the wrong actions. But what's the third? What's the common denominator that's really keeping you stuck? Are you ready? Well, I hope you're sitting down for this because the third reason behind why you haven't met the right guy is you. <clears throat> now, before you reach to the computer and you try and strangle me or send me a nasty email, Really hear me out. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you personally. What I'm saying, it's who you're being. So I want you to really pay close attention because this is vital. When we talk about who you're being, I want you to understand that within each one of us, it's almost like we have dual personalities. We have a strong side, which I call the light side, and then we have a dark side, which I call the weak side. So in women, I say that the strong side is the warrior princess, okay? And I want you to look at a part of your life. Now, maybe it's your career. Maybe it's the business that you're in. Maybe it's a hobby or passion you have. Maybe it's, you know, you know that you're a great friend, you're a loyal friend, whatever it be. You know there's a part of your life where you absolutely freaking rock. And you know that no matter what life throws at you, you're going to handle it. It's going to be like a speed bump. You're going to do what you need to do, and you're going to get back up and keep going and create the results you want. You're unfazed. But yet, there's another part of you. And in this part of your life, you continue to struggle. Now, this may be your weight. It may be your finances. And if you're listening to this call, it's your love life. And the reason you struggle in your love life is because you have this other part of you. Okay, this other part of your being, and I call that the wounded child. And the problem 
the truth is, the reason why you continue to struggle is because your wounded child is running the show. Now, we're going to go a little deeper on this, so you've got to start at the surface. But I want you to understand is that you can never have a truly happy and fulfilling relationship if you're running a wounded child. And in order to have the relationship you really want, you've got to be a warrior princess. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be some tough-ass chick that wants to kick ass and take names. It means you become a strong person who says, this is who I am and this is what I have to offer. And if you're not the right guy, then i got to walk away because that's what's right and what's best for me. And so there are some signs of a warrior princess, I'm sorry, of a wounded child. But what I want you to understand is that if you are running this wounded child, it's because there's a payoff. So what do I mean by a payoff? It means you're getting something out of it. Now, I know some of you are, are saying, but I would never do that. That doesn't make sense. And what I want you to realize is human behavior has absolutely nothing to do with logic and everything to do with emotion. So I want to show you what I mean by that. So if you're running a wounded child, there's a payoff. And it always com the payoff always comes down to one of two things. The first is the need to avoid pain. And the second is to seek pleasure. So in life, if you really were to look at things, you see that everything you do, you do for one of two reasons. You do it to avoid some kind of pain, or you do it to seek pleasure. And the problem with us human beings is we're, to, we're wired to do this instantaneously. So let me give you an example. You ever been in a relationship where you wanted to get away? And you knew it wasn't working for you. And you said, that's it, you're done. And then you went to have a conversation with a guy. And then you just couldn't do it. You want to know why you couldn't do it? Because in that moment, your belief is that it was going to cause, your wounded child said, this is going to cause us too pain, too much pain. We've got to be single again. We've got to go out into the world. We, may, we might not meet somebody better. And you come up with all these stories and all these excuses which justify why you need to stay. And you stay. And you never have that kind of happy and fulfilling relationship that you really want. But the wounded child is what I say, when I work with my mentoring clients, I say, the wounded child is a sneaky bitch because she's really good at manipulating things to get her way. Because there are times where the wounded child actually uses pleasure to stay stuck. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> Something I call the bad boy syndrome. Okay? Where there's a guy and you've got this great chemistry and you're really attracted to each other. And the sex is grateful. But the guy's an asshole. And you know he's an asshole. But because of the little glimpses of excitement and the attraction and the chemistry you have, you're continuing, you're willing to sell your soul. And again, there's no judge. Please understand, I'm not judging. It's not my role. I simply want you to understand what's really going on. And so when we seek pleasure, another part of the wounded child will very often will jump into relationships. Okay? Will have sex way before you should be having sex. Okay? You have to understand is that it's your wounded child that's screwing everything up. And it, ultimately, it's because of this need to avoid pain and to seek pleasure. And as long as the wounded child is wired to get these needs met, no matter what you say logically, no matter how much you try and rationalize, in that moment when your emotions are running high, you're going to do exactly what you've done every other time up until this point. So let me give you some examples because there are some signs, there are, there are some indicators which let you know if you're running a wounded child. So the first one is that you try too hard. You know, if you really get real, and again, for this next couple of minutes, I really want you to take time to really get honest with yourself and go, yeah, I do this. Yep, yep, that's me. It's, and again, nobody's watching with you, so you have nobody to answer to or to call you on this but yourself. But whenever a wounded child is insecure, she's going to try really hard to make things work. So that's one of the most common signs. Another common sign is focusing on the past and not letting go. Remember we said the need to avoid pain? 
Well, the wounded child knows that, you know what? I got burned before. And if I got to move on, that means I got to let go. And that means there's a possibility that I could have a lot more pain down the road. And I'm not willing to do that. So focusing on the past and not letting go is another sign of a wounded child. The third one is projection and blame. You know, I've worked with clients, <clears throat> excuse me, who the second a guy does something that, you know, or anybody does something, they automatically go and start blaming the other person and making them wrong. See, this projection blame is simply a defense mechanism to make the other person wrong. See, when you are a warrior princess, you don't have to make the other person wrong. You allow them the space to do what they want. Now, that doesn't mean you tolerate it. And in the event a person does something to dishonor or disrespect, disrespect you, then you do what you need to do to honor yourself. But when you're projecting and you're blaming others, it's a sign that you're a wounded child. And the fourth is jealousy, anger, or rage. I know there's some people who, out there who say, you know, well, jealousy is cute. It shows a man that I care. No, it doesn't. Okay? That's insecurity. Okay? The reason a person is jealous is because they're insecure. And the, piece, the reason a person goes into anger and rage is because they're trying to make the other person be who they want them to be and get get them to do what they want them to do. They're trying to get that emotionally unavailable man to be somebody that he's usually not. Now, I want you to realize that each one of us does some of these things occasionally. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you do this stuff and you do it consistently. So if you're running any of these signs consistently, it's simply a way for you to know that you've got a little wounded child that needs to be healed. The next sign is when you suppress your feelings or and emotions. See, the reason you suppress your feelings and emotions is because it keeps you from really dealing with the pain. Okay, and remember, we, we want to avoid pain. So if we feel that having to deal with our feelings and emotions is going to cause us pain, or expressing our feelings and emotions is going to cause us pain, then boop, we just shut it down. And so a great way of doing this is by avoiding things or numbing ourselves. The next sign of a wounded child is when you run sadness and depression. See, a lot of these things are distraction techniques that, that the wounded child uses from keeping herself from getting hurt. So when we go into a state of sadness and depression, yes, it might not feel good, but we know what we have. Where if we had to give up the sadness, give up to the depression, we now have to go into this world where we could really get screwed. So there's an expression, the devil that you know is better than the devil that you don't know. And very often that's how sadness and depression work as well. And I remember I said how <coughs> the wounded child is a sneaky bitch. Well, this is one of her most sneaky tactics, and it's something called confusion. And how this works is a, the wounded child goes, I don't know. I don't know how to meet a, a great man. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. And so how this works is by staying confused and not taking any action, the, confu the wounded child never gets hurt. You know, and she might say, yeah, I'm not happy, but it really keeps her from being vulnerable and really getting her heart ripped out. So what you're going to see with this is that this wounded child isn't something that just magically happened three years ago. If you get real, a lot of this stuff goes back to when you were a little girl. And you figured out early in life that when I run these things, it protects me. And it may have protected you in your little world when you were a little girl, but it's totally screwing you and effing up your life as a grown woman. And the next sign of a wounded child is seeking perfection. I see this one all the time. You know, he doesn't make enough money. He's not tall enough. He's not short enough. He's not fit enough. He doesn't have... His, his blue eyes aren't enough. His wallet isn't enough. His car isn't enough. His job isn't enough. You know, his, the size of his penis isn't enough. You know, whatever it is. See, it's another distraction technique because if you're seeking something that doesn't exist, you never have to get disappointed. So, again, I simply want you to understand how cunning this wounded child is. And the next sign is not being able to trust and being afraid to open up. Again, by not trusting, by not opening up, you keep yourself from getting hurt. You know, 
when we are devastated emotionally, it, there's actually studies that show on a cellular level, it actually affects our DNA. And so when it happens so early in life, it totally messes up how we play in the world. And so you've got to understand that when you're not able to trust and not able to open up, it's simply a sign that there's this little wounded child inside. And the next sign is worrying about the future. Again, another great distraction technique. Well, he might do this. He might, he might lie. He might cheat. He might run away. You know, the reality is, is there are no guarantees in life. But the more we stay focused on worrying about the future, the less we have to really put ourselves out there, the, the less risk we get hurt. And the last one is when you, the wounded child has a lack of confidence and is afraid to take risks. You know, the only, you know, one of my favorite expressions is you can't get the good fruit without going out on the limb. So anytime your confidence is taking a hit and it's been shaken, it's going to affect how you put yourself out there. It's going to, it's going to affect whether you're willing to take risks or not. See, this one thing about us human beings is we all have needs. And basically there are six human needs. And one of the needs we have is this need for certainty. We want to know. We want to know that we're going to be safe. We want to know that we're going to be okay. And so sometimes we've got to be vulnerable. We've got to take risks. And that scares the hell out of us. And so we would much rather get our need met, even if it's an unhealthy way, even if it's keeping us from having what, what it is we say we want, than to open up to the possibility of being hurt and being screwed over again. So what I want you to get out of this is that if you're running a wounded child and you have these signs, you're experiencing any of, any of these signs on a regular basis, this is the real cause of your problem. And so you could read all the books you want. You could search the Internet for hours, days. You can sign up for every website, listen to every expert. You can attend weekend seminars until you get to the real cause of your problem and deal with that. It will continue to go on and on and on and on. It literally is like autopilot. You are programmed, you are wired in your love life to be this wounded child. And the only way to succeed is ultimately to learn how to wire yourself to be the warrior princess. So what I want you to understand is that there are three reasons why you don't have the results that you say you want. The first is you don't have the right plan or the right strategy. The second is you're simply doing the wrong things. You're saying one thing and you're doing another with your actions. And the third is you're running a wounded child. Well, I've got some good news for you. Now, before you start throwing yourself a pity party, I want you to know that things don't have to be difficult. Okay? Because very often in life, the wounded, the wounded child is really good at throwing a pity party and, and feeling sorry for herself and getting the world to feel sorry for her. So what I want you to understand is that you're not broken. You don't need to be fixed. You don't need years of therapy. Now, very often when I do these calls, there's a therapist on, on, on the call who gets a little pissed off at this. So let me say this. I'll be quite transparent. I believe there's a time and place for therapy. I believe in acute crisis, somebody loses a loved one. There's a tragedy. A person loses a job. And all of a sudden, a person's world gets changed upside down then you know what? Therapy is a wonderful modality to get that person back up to speed. But I believe if a person has been struggling with something, going and to focus on why they're broken just keeps the problem going. So I use the expression like this. For the most part, therapy focuses on, imagine driving down a dead end road. Your problem is you drive, keep driving down a dead end road. And the more you drive down the dead end road, the more frustrated you get. And you try to go a different way, but you also keep going down the same road. Well, what therapy does is says, well, let's understand why you drive down this dead end road. Let's go talk about your mom and you know, what happened in third grade. And you know, when you first got your license and you ran over the dead cat on a dead end road, how did that make you feel? I don't believe that's helpful. I believe you simply need to learn how to back up turn around and find the road that's going to take you where you need to go. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot easier. So I know this might piss some people off, but if you're in therapy for years and you really haven't gotten anywhere, you might want to take 
a good look in the mirror and see if the therapist is working. Again, I think therapy can be a wonderful modality, but behind the therapy is usually another human being known as a therapist, and very often these therapists suck. And I'm simply speaking my truth. If you like that, great. If not, that's cool. I can respect your decision. But I simply, you know, I'm so tired of people. I've worked with, with clients who've been years in therapy, and after a couple of months, they're completely transformed. They go from wounded child to warrior princess. And you're going to hear some stories about that in a little while. So, you know, it doesn't have to be this long, laborious process where you have to, you know, focus on how you're broken and how much you suck. Because you don't. You're a human being trying to do the best you can. It's just nobody ever told you how to do it properly. And the, the last of the good news is you don't have to figure it out on your own. There is an easier way. Now, before I tell you how you can learn, how you can be your princess warrior in your love life and create the results that you really want, I want to bring out some special guests. And again, these were women who, little over a year ago, were in your exact seat. Now, before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about them. Because they're really, really amazing women. And so, the first one is Lizzie. And I'm, give me a second here. I just lost my notes. I just want to make sure I really give them the homage that they truly desire. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit about them, and then I'll bring them on and introduce you. So the first one is Lizzie. Okay, Her name is Elizabeth, but she likes to be called Lizzie. And Lizzie is, is the woman who's been there, done that. Lizzie was in a, in a marriage for 28 years where she was really unhappy and unfulfilled. And she finally tapped into a warrior princess and decided to walk away. But she had, literally had a bad taste. You know, and she realized you know, it was kind of like food poisoning. She didn't want to go back and eat at that restaurant again. And she knew she had to do some things differently. And to her credit, and you're going to hear her story in a little while, she did some things different, and now she's in a great relationship with a great guy. And the second person is Sasha. And Sasha is the woman that I call, you know, if I can do it, anyone can. And Sasha's got an amazing story. You know, she's overcome epilepsy. She's overcome financial troubles. She's overcome weight issues. I mean, if there was anybody who's, you know, and you're going to hear her story who said, you know, and people have told her that, you know, nobody wants to be with you, you know, and now she's, she's actually married to a, a great guy who loves her for the awesome woman that she is. Now, unfortunately, we're supposed to have a third guest on tonight, and due to life, she wasn't able to make it, and I really wish she could have, and her name was Kelly, and Kelly is the woman that I call is the it can happen to, it can happen woman. Now, when I first met Kelly, she was 49 years old. And she had never been in love, never had a truly happy and fulfilling relationship. Now, you want to talk about someone who was running a wounded child. Kelly was a woman who looked for love in all the wrong places and did whatever she could to try and make it. As she tried so hard, and she just kept trying to make square pegs fit in a round hole. Well, as a result of you know, doing her work and learning how to tap into her warrior princess, she was able to meet a great guy. And she had a great relationship. And it had a nice little run. But why I really wanted to bring Kelly on is because ultimately Kelly realized that this guy wasn't working for her. He was a nice guy, but he wasn't the right guy. And for the first time in her life, Kelly kicked this guy to the curb. She tapped into a warrior princess, and she realized that, you know what, I deserve better. And it's not just talk. She actually owns it, and she actually does it. And I really wish she could have been here tonight, because I know some of you are listening on this call are in a situation and you're with a guy and you're running your wounded child and you just keep going back for more and more because you feel that that's all you deserve or you're never going to, whatever is going on in your world. And that's ultimately the work that you need to do is get to, okay, why am I running this wounded child? So that being said, I'm going to bring out <clears throat> our two guests. So first I'd just like them to, to introduce themselves. So Lizzie and Sasha, would you like to say hello? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, all right. Well, first of all, I, I really want to thank you, ladies, for, for giving up your time and your energy. And I want everybody who's listening tonight to know that when I sent the email out and I was planning on doing this, you know, I sent an email out to, you know, a couple women. And Lizzie and Sasha were like the first one, like, we're on. You know, if we can help other women, then we're there. So I want to acknowledge you women both for showing up and giving your time tonight. So... How, how this is going to work is I envision, you know, Lizzie 
me, Lizzie, and Sasha, like on the Tonight Show, we're sitting behind the desk and we're simply having a conversation. There's no agenda other than, you know, just trying to help other women understand. And why I wanted women to come on is because they're in your shoes. They know what it was like. They went through the same things. And I want you to walk away with a call going, hey, if they can do it, why can't I? So I'm going to start off by simply asking a question. And Lizzie, we'll start with you. So when you were single, what was your biggest, you know, after getting out of that marriage, you know, and finally finding the courage to walk away, and now you're single again, what was your biggest frustration or your biggest fear? Well, I wouldn't say it was fear. Uh, it was more frustration um, because the, I felt that the men I was going out with, okay, it was like they weren't sincere. They were just BSing me just to um, get, get into my pants, if you want to put it very um, uh, clear, you know. So uh, that that's what I was feeling frustrated about because it just didn't feel right. You just knew. Um, at least I, at that point, I knew, okay, because with your help, I was able to see that. Before, I, I couldn't. So it would take me a long time to verify my, my instinct. But now it was just on the, the first 10, 15 minutes, I knew, eh, this guy is just... Out of here, and that was it. Right, cool. So, first of all, Lizzie, I want you to acknowledge that there are, you know, hundreds of women listening who have dated those same guys. You know, the guys who are simply out there trying to get in their pants. And we've been the first, I've been the first to acknowledge there are guys like that out there, and they're called the boys. And so, why I'm so grateful that you're sharing is this your frustration in trying to figure it out and how you learned by tapping into your warrior princess to simply be honest, be clear. And really pick up the red flags and pick them up quickly. Okay, thanks, Lizzie. So, Sasha, how about you? When now, when you're back into you know your single life and you had been single for a while, what was your biggest frustration or fear? Um, basically, I was frustrated because I didn't feel good enough. I had such insecurity issues that I was I was doing this not just with men, but really with everyone in my life. I was always overcompensating, always trying to make everybody happy, and I wasn't really even trying to make myself happy. It was like, I need to be with someone and I'll be happy, but it just, it wasn't working because I was always feeling like I'm not pretty enough, I'm not tall enough, I'm not skinny enough, and then in my case, as you know, um, shortly after my 40th birthday, I suffered a seizure, found out I have epilepsy, which made it even worse because men were like, I don't want to take care of you, you know, there's something wrong with you. And then I had a hysterectomy shortly after that, and that kind of sent me in a, into a tailspin of, oh, great, you know, now I've lost all my womanliness. So it was just trying too hard and not feeling good enough. Hmm. And thank you so much for, for being honest and sharing that because I know there are so many women who can relate to that? And again, as you're seeing now, that's all simply part of the wounded child. So for Sasha, when did the light go off for you, which made you realize that, you know, that way wasn't working? The, you know, I'm not good enough isn't working, and that it wasn't leading, leading to the results you really wanted? Well, basically, I had a series. I was basically single for about 15 years. I had an, a marriage in my early 20s, and I was married to an abusive alcoholic. <laughs> Bad boys. They were they were my thing for a long time. Um, but what I realized is I was having a series of very short, you know, dramatic relationships. Men would like me from the get-go, and because I was trying to make them happy, it's like instantly, ooh, I like you. And they were sort of pushing it, and then suddenly, after a short amount of time, they were disappearing. The last man was, um, we dated, he said he liked me, and two weeks into the relationship, if you want to call it that, he said he was going to take me to Hawaii on a business trip, and then three days later, he vanished. He stopped calling, he stopped emailing, and I just thought, I've got to stop this. I, I don't, I'm dating the wrong men, and I'm tired of it, because what dawned on me is, hey, I've overcome the epilepsy, I've survived the hysterectomy, I've survived a very bad childhood and issues in my youth, you know, sexual abuse, um, you know, the bad marriage. And I thought, how did I do all of this, become very good in my career, go back to school and graduate with honors? It was like, I've done too much good to sell myself short. I need to change something. Hmm. Awesome. And again, this is a perfect example of how in, 
in her career, in her college education, Sasha was a warrior princess. She was kicking ass and, and taking names. But when it came to intimacy in her personal life, that wounded child was running the wrong show. So, you know, thank you so much for sharing that, Sasha. Now, Lizzie, how about for you? When did the light go off for you, which made you realize that your, was, your way wasn't working and leading to the results you really wanted? Well, you know, Dr. Joe, just like Sasha said, in terms of career, everything was going great, okay? And, uh, but then I, when I was meeting new guys, I was following the same pattern I had with my ex. And I said, no, this, this can't be. So, but it took me a, a, a little bit, you know, and once I saw, see, I'm falling in the same pattern every time. It will go good uh, in the beginning, and then two or three days after that, the same pattern. And that's when I finally realized that I wasn't over the patterns that I had with my ex, and that's when I realized, I saw the light, this has to change, because if I don't change this pattern, it's going to continue to happen. Absolutely, that's like, as Einstein says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So you've actually, right. you started to notice your pattern, and you, and you realize you got to the point where, hey, this isn't working for me. So, Lizzie, what would you say was the biggest mistake that you kept making when you were single? Biggest mistake. Hmm. Boy, that's a good one. Um, I'm a very trustful person, too. I would say that, that I always would, I try to always see the good in everyone, and uh, I think that would blind me in hmm. a lot of ways until I had to really, um, like you said it before, you have to take the emotion out. You know, and it's not that you're cruel or anything. You just have to be realistic. Hmm. So that um, I would say that. Okay, and you know what? That's great that you bring it up because they're so, see the one thing about women is you all have such big hearts, and you want to believe. And I believe a lot of this goes back to how we've all been programmed in society. And a lot of girls, little girls, have been brought up to believe, you know, being the princess and then the knight and the white horse is going to come and save you. And realize there are there are a lot of clowns out there, and there are a lot of guys who shouldn't be trusted. And I, you know, I've written many articles on that. You know, trust is a right, not a privilege. I mean, trust is a privilege, not a right. Where you know, a man has to earn the privilege of your trust. You know, the man has to earn the privilege of being able to have you open your legs for him. It's not something you should just willingly give away and just trust every man. Because if I had a nickel for every guy that a woman trusted that she slept with who disappeared within a 24 hours, me and Donald Trump be having lunch on his yacht. And so it's, it's really learning to be that strong warrior princess and learning to take things slow and trusting the right person for the right reasons. So, Sasha, what would you say was the biggest mistake that you kept making when you were single? Um, the main thing was picking the wrong men for the wrong reason. Um, chemistry. I hate to say it, but I, I hate that word because I, I think it's a fallacy. I think we feel like, oh, if you feel those butterflies, that's the right man. Well, that's just a physical reaction. You know, chemi true chemistry, when you really connect with someone on a friendship level, on a partnership level, you don't necessarily feel that in your gut. There's just a comfort to it. But I was picking, you know, the bad boys. I was picking, you know, the sexual partners. I wasn't really picking good guys. And I was saying to myself, why can't I have a good guy? And yet I wasn't really picking them because I didn't feel that I deserved them. So, And then I would overcompensate with them because they knew they had a sucker in me because I was trying so hard to make them happy. Mm. So, and you know, you touched on something, and I'm a big proponent of it, because I hear it all the time, there's no chemistry. And I think that's just, you know, the wounded child, you know, just running this story to keep, you know, get her pleasure, get her excitement. But at the end of the day, that chemistry wears out. And what we're really, and you, you nailed it, it's what we're really looking for is connection. We really want that person that we know that's going to be by our side. That when, you know, when we have an epileptic seizure or when we have a, a, a trouble, that that man is going to show up and he's going to be there by your side. And I know that, you know, 
and we're going to talk about that in a little while, but now you've been able to experience that with your now husband, James. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, Sasha, what would you say is the catalyst which ultimately enabled you to create the result that you want? Because if you had to go back and look at you always wanted the result. Mm -hmm. But what was it that enabled you to switch and actually make it happen? Well, when I decided, and, and it was just a life switch, is really what it was. Like I told you, I decided, how can I be so good in so many other parts of my life and not be good at this? And I just sat down one day and I started reading things online. And I think it was on your Tango or one site that one of your articles was on. And I found you. And I think your blog post for the day was something about how soon to share things. And it actually annoyed me because <laughs> it was still in that mode of, you know, screw you, I can't find anybody. And I remember writing to you saying, that's not fair. I have an illness. I have to, you know, disclose it to a man. And I remember you writing to me and saying, you know, no, you don't. You know, you don't have to put it that way. And I thought, okay. And then I started reading more of your posts. And one of the things that really struck me was about selling yourself online and not doing that. And I thought, you know, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm sitting there writing these posts for these online sites you know, basically, oh, I'm so good, pick me, pick me, and I changed things where it was more about, hey, do you like this, do you like that, if so, guess what, I might be the lady for you, and I brought more humor into my post, and then I, you know, go figure, I spent one night uh, looking at every single post in an area, in my area at the time, came across James, his was kind of humorous, I wrote him a note that was very humorous, not like, oh my God, I'm so desperate. He wrote me back, and boom, the next day we went out to lunch that lasted eight and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> and now you are husband and wife. Yes. Cool. And, you know, and he, for, he, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say that he, he asked me out for a movie the next day. Two weeks later, he asked me to join him to meet his parents. And I want to say three months, four months later, we were engaged. <laughs> hmm. And, you know, and this is why I say there is no magic plan. There is no 30 days. It's different for everyone. You know, some people will, like Sasha and James will just hit it off and, and boom. Other people, though, like Lizzie's with her man, is, is on a slower track. There's the right track for you. And when you meet the right guy, you both will determine what that is. So, Lizzie, what would you say is the catalyst which enabled you to create the result that you always wanted? Oh, the list, the famous list <laughs> that you told me to do, which was my needs and my wants. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, um, like you explained to me, your needs is that that's what you need. That's what you are looking for. Okay? And there's no, um, how can I put it, uh, no compromise, okay? But with the wants... Eh, it's okay. You want it, but you can live with it or without it. Mm. But that, for me, that was the clincher, the, the list. And, I, and, of course, the list is different for everyone. And, um, and for me, I knew what my needs were. And once I knew that, then whoever I, I dated, if he didn't, if he didn't fit in, uh, in that list, that was it. Goodbye. Mm. I was on to my next one. Mm. So, that was it. So by ultimately having the clarity that the list gave you, it it changed the game. So it was kind of like we talked about earlier, having the strategy. So it had, right. had, exactly. had, had the right strategy. Okay. And for those of you who don't know what Lizzie's talking about, is when I work with my mentoring clients, there's a process that I take them through. It's called the Checklist for Love, where we actually go through a three-step process to help a person create literally a checklist. And it's, it's literally, like it sounds, it's the Checklist for Love. And those are the important qualities that you absolutely positively must have. See, one of the things I've learned in working with women is you're unclear. You know, I want a man, okay, or I want a good man, okay? That's not enough. If you're going to spend the rest of your life with someone, you better know, I need a man, and this is the, the important qualities and characteristics that I absolutely positively must have. That's exactly what I did in my life. That's why I have such a great relationship with my wife. After the fiasco with my ex fiance. I got really clear and said, okay, if I'm going to spend the rest of my life with someone, what is it that I need? And I made my list and I promised myself. The second I knew somebody didn't have one of the things on my list, I was like the roadrunner. Beep, beep, and I was out of there. And I promised myself that I would never ask another woman to marry me in, 
until I knew that she had everything on my list. And the more I dated my wife, the more I just, oh, she does this, she does this, she does this, until ultimately she had it all. And so, you know, the truth that I want you to walk away with tonight is it, this stuff doesn't have to be difficult. There is an easier and smarter way. It's just, unfortunately, nobody ever showed you. And that's what we're trying to do tonight is give you the foundation to understand the first step that, you know, if you want to create the results just like these women, you don't have to struggle. So, Sasha, uh, let's start with Lizzie first. Lizzie, <clears throat> there are women who are out there now who are in your shoes, who maybe are coming out of divorce. Maybe they're just getting out of bad relationship. You know, they have a habit of dating all the wrong guys. What do you tell them? Because they want what you have. You now have a wonderful relationship with Regis. And you're happier than you've ever been in a re relationship-wise. What do you tell these women who are in this place where you were once were? You can't give up hope. I'm that type of person. I'm a very hopeful person. Um, and again, like for me, it's the list. I can't stress that as, as, as so much. And maybe for some people... They say, oh, I go for too much of a high standard. But you know what? It isn't high standard because that is what you want. And that right person is out there. And if you stick to that, it, he will appear because you will be able to discriminate when, when you go out with, with, uh, with the guys. And once you know what you really want, it doesn't, how can I put it? Um, when you X them out, it's, it's not, the emotional part is out, you know? Hmm. Um, it, it's, right. I think that's how you have to do it. It's like being a scientist, it, go for the facts. Right. And once you know that, you, you should be fine with it because that is what, that is what you want. Right. And don't let anybody else tell you that what you're doing is wrong because everybody is different. And we all have our list. So uh, I don't give up hope. He's out there. It's, it's, it can take a day. It can take a week. It can take a month. It can take a year. But it, it took me uh, five, six years before I found my, the man that I'm really madly in love with. So um, just don't let lose hope. Cool. That's, that's Right. And, and you know what, I want to actually expand on this because it's really important. Because I think hope is really important, but you also need the strategies and you also need to be the warrior princess. Because one of the things, and how I actually came up with what you're learning tonight is, I originally just started working with women like Lizzie and just teaching them the strategies. It's like, okay, you want to create a great relationship, this is how you go do it. You create your checklist for love, you go write a profile, you go on a date, you screen guy, you ask these questions. And what I noticed is that 50% of the women went and created great results. And the other 50% kept screwing it up. They kept sabotaging it. They kept saying one thing and doing another. And I, it like was baffling to me. It's like, okay, you've got the strategy, you've got the plan, and yet you won't do it. And that's when I started looking at, okay, what's really going on? Why are half the group doing great it's like imagine a group of people joining a gym the same gym and going to the gym and half got in phenomenal shape and the other didn't well you know the people who aren't getting in shape there's something else going on and so that led me to explore and do this other work where also i realized that it's because of the wounded child so lizzie's absolutely right hope is really important if as long as you've got the strategy and you're being the warrior princess but you could have all the hope in your world if you don't really believe it and you're running a, wound, a wounded child, then hope isn't going to do anything. Because you've got to be able, you've got to go out and create the results. Hope is wonderful, but just like Lizzie, she put herself out there. And she screened men and she did all those other things. So you've got to be able to have the skills and you've got to have the strategies. But it all starts with being your warrior princess. Would you agree, Lizzie? Yes, absolutely. Cool. cool. All right. Thanks. Words. All right. Now, Sasha, how about you? You've come through a lot. And I'm sure, you know, 16 months ago, you can imagine that you'd be on a call, you know, sharing your story 
with other women, telling them that, you know, it's possible and what they, you know, that if you've overcome it, they can do that as well. So for those women who are out there who are struggling, who say, but you don't understand, I've got some stuff, my life is different, my story is different, what advice would you give to them? Well, the first thing is, as far as life and stuff, we have all got it. And, you know, we can all, you know, probably sit around the table and discuss who's had what. But trust me, considering a lot of what I've been through, you know, I, I actually was close to suicide so because of how difficult my life has been. So if I can do it, trust me, you can do it. The main thing, and hopefully if everyone's been listening to what you've been saying and they, they read your site, you're not asking people to change, and that was the biggest thing for me, because a lot of books are like, you've got to do this, or you've got to look a certain way, and I think that's why I didn't take those well. With, with you, it was like how to present myself so that people could really see who I truly was. My mom used to joke that I'm so tough, I had a chip on my shoulder, which I did. And she said, I wish people could see the true you, because inside you're all mush and you're good-hearted. Well, I wasn't presenting that, and with your advice, it was a, I was able to say, wait a minute, here's how I can write my online post so that I seem approachable, which I wasn't before. So that's a big thing. You know, you're not asking women to change. You're showing them how to show who they truly are to attract someone, which I think is, is a really important message. And the second thing that works for me is that step outside the box. Don't say, oh, he's got to be six foot four, you know, dark hair, blue eyes. Be a little bit smarter in looking around because when I saw uh, James's post, it wasn't like well, love at first sight. It was like, well, you know, he looks a little bit older, but there was something in his post that it's like, okay, he seems like a nice guy. And you know, from there, it just turned into perfection. So you you've got to step outside the physical, and ooh, there's got to be that chemistry to really find the good guys. Cool. And you know what? You just said something I really want to touch on because it's the stuff that really pisses me off you know about these books and, and programs and things out there like say this and, and do this be somebody you're not just so you can catch a guy where that that's lying that's manipulating somebody it's it's not being authentic it's not being genuine the whole premise and that's exactly what we're talking about is be the real you because that's who the warrior princess is the warrior princess is the real you it's it's the child that you were born into this world as but there's this thing that called life that happened and all these stories that got created and all these experiences that caused the wounded child to get formed. And this wounded child is simply a defense mechanism to protect you. But she's keeping you from having everything that you say you want. And so, as Sasha so eloquently said, is that you've got to learn to be that person first. It's like building a foundation. You build a foundation on the warrior princess, then you go do the rest, and then it happens. But it's, if you build it on a wounded child, it's like quicksand. It's simply a matter of time before it all comes crashing down. And that's the reason why we did this tonight. So I'm going to wrap it up in a few minutes. But Sasha and Lizzie, is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap it up? Hmm. Like Sasha said, if she can do it, Everyone can do it, well, and I feel the same way. Don't lose hope. There are, there are good guys out there, and they, they do want relationships. So be patient and, and take the steps, and you can do it, trust me. I'm 44, and I am happy. I'm more happy than I have ever been, and I can't think of a time that I didn't have my husband. <laughs> that's how great it is. And, and that's the way it should be, and that's why we're doing this is to – help you realize it can and will happen you just got to do things some little a little differently and when you show up and you be the person that you are and you live from that place you know as Sasha said you know, there are good guys out there yeah a guy's not going to commit his life to a wounded child and the only kind of men that wounded a wounded child attracts are the bo are the boys the guys who won't commit who don't commit or as Lizzie said earlier just want to get in her pants you know a real man wants to be there for his woman when she needs him. You know, it's like being a rock. You know, I, I can understand. I can relate very much. I, you know, I've known Sasha a while now, and I've never met James, but I've got a good understanding of what kind of guy he is. And, you know, we're very much alike in that it makes us feel good when we can take care of our woman. 
and we can be there for them and, and be that rock that makes us feel better about ourselves. And that's our warrior side. And so when you get a warrior and a warrior princess together, that's when you have an amazing, amazing relationship. And that's what these women both have in their lives now. And that's our goal and that's our attention for you. So thank you, ladies. I so appreciate you being here and giving up your, your time tonight. And I know everybody who's listening appreciates that as well. So I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, everyone. So before we, we wrap up, I know some of you are out there going, okay, this makes sense. I know I've got this stuff going on, but I'm confused. I don't know where to go, what to do. And you're at that point in your life where you realize that you need help. You, you can't do it on your own. You've read the books. You've search the internet for hours, you don't know who to believe and where to go. And at this point, either what you're hearing tonight really resonates and makes sense for, for you, or it doesn't. And so if you're at the point in your life and you want to know how you can take this to the next level and really get the results you want, I've actually created a really cool program. It's actually called the GPS for Love Mentoring Program. Now this program is designed specifically to help you identify and eliminate the obstacles which are really blocking you. See, we're not talking about the surface stuff like writing a profile. We're talking about what's really going on. And we're going to get in there and work specifically on, in identifying that and eliminating it. Now, this is a customized mentoring program which helps you develop the knowledge, skills, and tools to create the results that you really want. Now, it's a customized program. What that means is it's, it's not for everyone. See, you're different than Sasha's different from Lizzie, and Lizzie's different than Mary, and Mary's different than Beth. Okay? So we all have different experiences in life. So this program is actually a customized program where I mentor you. This isn't where I coach, where I sit on the, on, on the sideline and say, go do this. Because this wounded, chi this wounded child is so strong. She's so powerful. She's been running this show for so long. She knows exactly what to do. She knows exactly how to keep you down. And so fortunately, I understand how to make her go away. And so we're going to create a program where I've created a program that's going to help you get to the root cause of your problems and give you the knowledge, skills, and tools so that you can go out and create the results that you really want. And it's also designed to help you get results quicker, easier, and better than you would ever get on your own. See, I'm the kind of person, I want to go from A to B as quickly and efficiently as possible. You know, I've struggled enough in my life. I've wasted more time, more energy, and more money on things hoping they would help me and ultimately realizing that it was just nothing but a bunch of crap. When I design a program, I make sure that it works and I test drive it to see that it works. And I fine tune it until it's perfect. And that's exactly what this program is designed. It's designed to help you get the results. See, one of the things I learned from one of my mentors is that if you want to succeed at something, simply find somebody who's already good at it and learn from them. You know, I find it ironic that a lot of these, and I'm not here to put people down, but I just like to be real. I like to expose the truth. A lot of these quote-unquote experts out there are divorced or not married. You know, it's like I always say, would, would you take financial advice from the homeless guy on the bench? You know, yeah, he might know what he's talking about, but if he really knew what he was talking about, he'd be achieving and experiencing the results himself. So if you're really at the point in your life where you've been there, done that, you've struggled enough, and you're ready to get to where you want to go, then this program might be the ideal opportunity for you. And the reason it's the real might be the ideal opportunity is because it gets to the real cause behind your struggles. Look, we've identified tonight, it always comes down to one of three things. And as Lizzie said so well on her part, if you've got a pattern, and you notice this pattern has been, and been there for a while, I guarantee you that it's because the wounded child is running the show. And as Sasha said, you could read the books, you could change, you can pretend to do this stuff, and you might get results for a little while. I would say it's kind of like all those people who go on a diet. You know, it's they, they go on a diet, they lose weight, and then three months later, all that weight comes back with a couple more friends. It works the same. See, human beings, we think we're so different, but when you understand human behavior, we're so, all so predictable. And that's a bad thing, and it's a good thing. It's bad because we continue to do what we've always done. But it's good because if you understand how we operate, and you have the skills and tools to train yourself to do things differently, that's when you're able to fix the problems and go on and create the ultimate results that you're looking for. 
Now, if you really resonated with this tonight and you really want to learn to take this forward and, and get the results that you're looking for much quicker and faster, and you're interested in exploring if the GPS for Love mentoring program is right for you, all you need to do to take the first step is go to smarterdatingforwomen.com slash GPS mentoring. And when you get there, there's a specific page that I've designed to tell you a little bit more about the program. And I've got to be upfront. This program isn't for everyone. This is, pe this is for people who are serious. Okay? I only, see, I've got a phenomenal track record because I don't work with everyone. I only work with people who are really serious and committed to getting results. So in order to get into this program, you've got to apply. And so if you're interested, you go on the page, you go on the page and you click the button, and you fill out a little questionnaire. And that's designed to help me see where you're at. It's, help me, it's designed to help me give, give me a great insight to see exactly where you're stuck and what's going on before we even talk. And then if I read your application and I look at it, we're going to have a, a conversation, a 30-minute free consultation, where you and I are going to get together and we're going to explore what's really going on to see where you're stuck, where we're going to go deeper and really get to the root of the wounded child and see exactly why and how she's doing things and ultimately what you need to do to go on and create the results you want. And then at that point, if it's something that's worth exploring and you want to go further, we'll talk about that. If not, we'll part friends and know, if anything, you'll know exactly what's going on. So the reason I created this program is because, like these women on the call, I struggled for 14 years. Okay? I wanted a relationship. And I'm not afraid to admit it. Okay? And I just kept failing and going from one dead-end relationship to another. And ultimately, so I had the worst relationship possible. And fortunately, I was able to figure it all out. I was able to create that result. And this year, I celebrated my 12th anniversary with my wife. And having someone special, you know, a true partner, a best friend, you know, a lover, in and out of the bedroom, other than having children, it's like I say, it's right there. Right next to having children, it's one of the greatest gifts in life. But as you saw with the Punnett Square, unfortunately, only very few people get to experience it. I was actually reading some research a little while ago, and it said only 15% of the population will go to their deathbed having experienced the kind of happy and fulfilling relationship that they really wanted. And I think that sucks because it doesn't have to be that way. But unless people change and do the work and be the person they need to be and pick the right person for the right reasons, they're going to be in the 85% who struggle. And so that's not the group I want to be in. I did everything I can not to be in there. And now that I've learned, I want to show you what you need to do to get in the 15%. So just like Lizzie and just like Sasha, you can have the relationship you ultimately desire and deserve. So I want you to know it has been an absolute honor and privilege to be here with you tonight. And I want to thank you. The reason I created this event is because I wanted you to understand what was really going on. So now you know. And it's simply up to you to decide what you want to do with this information. Remember, no one can do your push-ups for you. Just because you join a gym doesn't mean you're going to get in shape. You've got to go and you've got to take action and you've got to do the work to make things happen. And if I can assist you in the process, please know that my door and my heart are open. Have a great night. God bless.